So when we're looking at strikes and we're trying to figure out cheap or expensive options, you can go to the fixed strike you know, view here and uh, I zoomed out, which is why it's so big. Um, but there's this statistical mode, right? And what the statistical mode is, it'll just show you on a relative basis to all their strikes where strikes are maybe cheap or rich, right? But if you're just sort of looking at this, that doesn't ultimately give you the context you need to sort of say, okay, this is historically very cheap or not. So to get your basis for that, if you go into the scanners tool and you specifically say, okay, here's Avgo, what is this telling me? Number one, implied vol rank is at 37%. Well, it's reporting earnings tonight, so it makes sense that implied vol is elevated. And an IV rank of 37 for a name that's about to, employ, to report earnings, that's about what you would expect, right? Uh, okay, what's the other feature here that's interesting? Uh, risk reversal. Risk reversal is elevated, which tells me that calls are rich relative to puts. And this is specifically one month 25 delta call. So let's just call it J and expiration slightly out of money call versus a slight mail input calls are rich for the given name okay now calls versus puts that's a relative measure so how do we break this down further let's go look at call skew percentile and put skew percentile and when you go look at avgo down here you can see that the call skew percentile is 85th percentile what does that mean that means people are pretty bulled up in avgo right now right it's 85 percent high the 25 delta call versus the the at the money call is now richer than it's been 85% of the time over the last year. We've had some pretty good bullish moves over last year, so that's, you know, it's not 90th, 99th, okay, but you can tell which people are leaning. Which way? Also, what about the put skew? Nobody really wants puts. And if you go and you look at Equity Hub, okay, because that's how the skew, that's how the prices are positioned, what would you expect to see if you went and looked at Equity Hub? You would expect to see people short puts and long calls, right? Why? Because that put skew rank is very low. There's no put demand versus the call skew is very elevated, right? People must be long calls. So if we look at the positions, what do the positions show us? Here are all of the short puts. And interestingly, the positioning here shows kind of the opposite of what I just said. It looks like people are actually, traders are actually short calls. Now these are pretty far out of the money calls. Um, stocks around 400. So if we're just looking at the positioning here and you go up into 440, you can see that, what does this look like? It looks like people have shorted calls, right? Call overriding, for example, up in those strikes. There's a little bit of in the money calls, that's one big call, and then sort of short puts, right? So dealers are long these puts. So what does this actually look like? People are short calls and they're short puts. So this is not quite as aggressive as uh, Oracle where people are long calls and short puts. So, okay, that's the information. It looks like when you look at the gamma picture overall, a lot of at the money gamma, this implies that you should have lower uh, or stickier moves. And you kind of see that this gamma peaks into about 425 to 430, right? So that's where the maximum sort of dealer resistance would be. Overall, this looks like a pretty well supported uh, stock. Like you shouldn't expect a whole lot of uh, relative volatility when you're looking at this. So you go, okay, what if anything are the features of this that I could exploit? What would be the trade? I need to start to sort of dial in if there's an opportunity here. So how do you look at it from an opportunity? Well, we start with that one month basis again, right? And we stick with the one month basis because if you just dive in and pick a random strike on a random option at a random time, and you don't know statistically where you're at, then it's hard to get around. It's like if I just dropped you, have you ever played that game where you, it drops you in a country? right? And you don't know on your phone, you're like, oh man, like, I don't know where I'm at or what's going on. It's like, oh, I'm in France. Okay. I know the language. I know the street. I know the area. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Then you can zoom in, right? It's the, the funnel structure. So it's like, okay, we started with scanners. We looked at positioning. We sort of know there's a lot of positive gamma to that upside. Now, can we confirm some of this with SKUs? Well, let's start with the put side. We showed people were short puts, right? They sold the puts. The put skew is very low. And look at this skew. Right, that cone, the green area is the historical range for uh, for the stock, right? For the last 90 days, if you look at our settings that you'd see, look at this put skew, very depressed, right? That teal line there is very depressed. So puts are, I would say cheap. What does that mean? Do you typically want to short cheap stuff? Not really. Now, it doesn't mean that vol shouldn't contract after earnings. I think it will. Does it mean you make money on it? I don't know. But focusing on that put wing, 
doesn't seem like a great idea because statistically it's quite low. Now vol can come down, but that's different from saying I need to focus on this feature specifically. Now calls we said were rich, plus there's positive gamma. So those two things are a little bit at odds with each other. Because I can see all of that positive gamma, and I see that elevated skew, I'm thinking that I feel a little more comfortable maybe short that upside, right, in a mild way, um, than I would be if the call skew was cheap, for example. So now we have, okay, positive gamma and that call skew statistically elevated, as we said before, you know, it's not 99th percentile, but that call skew does seem a little bit a little bit rich. So where does that leave me? Well, this is one feature that I may be able to, to sort of exploit a little bit, uh, or maybe this is the, you know, if you think about like, what is the, you know, I need, I have a hammer, like where's the nail sticking out? Well, the nail seems to be sticking out right here. And then overall, we would expect implied vols to come down a little bit, right? Because of earnings contraction. So, okay, calls and call skew might be interesting. Now, Ben, you asked about cheap in the money calls with NVIDIA, and, and the process is going to be the same. Just instead of looking for something expensive, you're looking for something that's cheap. Um, what would you think would happen to implied vol after earnings? Well, if we go to the volatility dashboard and we go to the term structure here, and you say, what, what would I think implied vol should do in terms of contraction? Well, that's where Ford implied vol is helpful, right? Because this is your best guess at where implied vol should go after earnings. And what you can see here is for next week's expiration, 1219, implied vol is currently 70, and we estimate that it'll drop all the way to 48. So that's a pretty good 20 point vol contraction, right? That's not bad. So now we're starting to narrow in. Okay, overall pretty good vol contraction, positive gamma overall uh, suggests some stability in there. That call scheme might be a little re rich. So what are some strategies here that maybe make sense? Call counter spreads, call diagonals, uh, a strangle, um, even a straddle if it's if it seems like it's a little uh, pricey. I don't.